I've tested out a lot of these gaming controllers like the Razer Kishi, the Backbone, the GameSir, and some of them work better than others, some of them feel better than others, and I'm always willing to try something else out. So today we're going to be testing out the Razer Kishi version 2. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Razer Kishi version 2, and mostly because it's dropped in price a lot since it first came out. They make both an iPhone and an Android version, or a USB-C version as they call it, and they've both dropped down to almost half the original price. Now I'm going to apologize up front about my voice. Our local weather here has just dropped about 40 degrees in the last couple days, and my body is just not happy with that. I feel great, but I definitely sound worse than I feel. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Not a whole lot going on in the front. This one is for the iPhone. Um, it says Universal Mobile Gaming Controller for your iPhone. Let's take a look at the back of the box real quick. And it's got a couple things listed here. Universal Fit with Extendable Bridge. So this thing's obviously going to spring outwards to fit different size phones. Stream PC and console games. We're definitely going to test that out. Console Quality Mobile Gaming Controls. They call it Console Quality because... I guess the Nintendo Switch is a console, and if if it feels like a Nintendo Switch controller, which I don't think is a good thing, but I guess they can call that console quality. Ergonomic design, next-gen Razer Nexus app, and that's something that the version 1 didn't have. And then optimize for maximum performance, so this plugs obviously right into your phone, so there's going to be no latency, like no Bluetooth type stuff. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. So in the box, nice and simple, just the controller and some foam pad. And then underneath the foam pad, we've got some instructions. So we'll take a look at those. But the controller itself, you can see it doesn't collapse any more than this. So as opposed to the version 1, and this is a, a Game Vice version of the, the Razer Kishi, it's basically the same, same type thing. Um, you can see that it's possibly not quite as portable. It looks like it might be lighter weight, but this one does get a little bit skinnier, but it is a little bit taller. So I guess it's kind of a trade-off. This, this dog bone shape is very familiar if you've seen the backbone. In fact, if we put these two up next to each other, you can see they favor each other very much. Similar uh, joystick styles, similar button styles, similar D-pad, <laughs> very, very, very similar. Which isn't a bad thing because I've reviewed the Backbone and the Backbone was a great controller. So I'm looking forward to testing out this Razer Kishi version 2. Now like I said, both of these have dropped in price. Both the iPhone and the Android version of these have dropped in price drastically. I think at Amazon right now you can grab these for about $59. Now when it was a toss up between the version 1 and the version 2, when this came out at $99, these were dropping down into the $50, $60 range, and eventually they dropped down even more than that. So this was kind of a no-brainer. But now that we get these pretty close in price, then you got to see which one you like better. Now, I think the most glaring difference between these two, besides the size difference between the two, is going to be these joysticks. I mean, this is a lot bigger of a joystick with a lot more travel. A lot more similar to like an Xbox controller and these guys here are definitely smaller they are clickable uh, less travel and basically very very similar to a Nintendo Joy-Con so without even plugging anything in and testing it I am a little disappointed that we went from what I thought was a pretty nice feeling controller on this version 1 to you know, the, a Joy-Con style, which I've never been a huge fan of. But I'm willing to give it a try. So let's see what else we got going on here. We've got, obviously, the, the two joysticks. We've got a D-pad, which feels pretty decent. We've got a couple buttons. We'll figure out what these do here in a second. Uh, the A, B, X, Y buttons. These do feel better than the version 1 buttons do. These ver version 1 buttons were very, I don't know, spongy. And these are a little bit more clicky. So, a lot less effort needed to get the action done. On the, uh, the shoulders here, we've got an L1, an L2, an R1, and R2. And then we've got these two, which they call L4 and R4. So, we've got L3 and R3 here. 
And these two, I'm imagining, are going to be programmable from the app that we saw listed. But the, uh, the other thing I'm going to say is these R2 and L2s, these feel pretty good. For a small little mobile controller like this, um, these triggers, they actually feel pretty decent. Overall, in the hand, I think everything ergonomically fits just right. If you're going to be playing a game that has a joystick in your left hand and these A, B, X, Y buttons, then this feels actually pretty good. If you're doing dual joystick and then triggers, it feels pretty good too. And if you're going to be doing uh, the D-pad and buttons, it's not too bad. You're not reaching way down here for the D-pad. It's really just from here to here. So for retro type games, that's going to be pretty decent also. So overall, ergonomically, I'm pretty happy with, with that. Also, we've got these little rubber pads in here that they say you can take out if you think you want to try your case. And it actually says that in the instructions if you want to try uh, keeping your phone in a case and, pl and plugging into this. I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. There's probably not very many cases that's going to fit on that. So besides that, no buttons on the back here to worry about. I don't usually use those type of buttons anyways. And it looks like it's got a pretty decent stretch to it. And it's not, uh, it's not jinky in the fact that some of them you can feel the springs like catch here and then catch here and then catch here. It's pretty fluid. So not too bad. Again, feels feels very much like the backbone. So I guess the next thing we need to do is go ahead and plug a phone in this thing. So the test candidate today is going to be an iPhone 12 Max. And this is a bigger phone, but I think it's going to fit in there just fine. Now I did try it with this very small, you know, compared to some of the cases I've had before, but very small OtterBox commuter, I think this was. And it just would not fit in there. Even with the rubber pads taken out, the uh, lightning connector just wasn't long enough to, to make it into the lightning connector. So I'm going to say besides the really, really flimsy, maybe silicone, you know, super skinny cases, you're probably going to be taking your phone out of the case to use this thing. Now it fits in the controller pretty easily once you do take it out of the case. So you just put it in the left side first. And again, you can use it with or without those rubber pads. And then extend it out. Plug in the lightning connector and then you're good to go. Now the first time you do plug this thing in it's going to recognize that there's a controller plugged in and it's going to say it's missing its app and it's going to prompt you to download this Nexus app. And the Nexus app works pretty decently. It gives you some options on some games. It gives you some suggestions from the different services. So it's got Razer's Xbox picks assuming that you have the Xbox cloud service gaming and then some other games from the App Store, some other suggested ways of doing remote play like Steam Link and PS Remote Play. So it's a pretty cool app. We're going to try out some of the things with it. Like you're supposed to be able to add installed games to this and use this as an overall launcher. I've never really used these launchers a whole lot with the other controllers, but I'm willing to give it a try. There are some settings that you can do in here to change like the button remapping. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I think that most of the games I'm going to play are going to be just fine with the ABXY setup. So let's go ahead and just get right into a game. So I'm going to start off first with the Xbox Cloud Gaming. And when I selected this from the Razer app, it did send me uh, to the website and it gave me some instructions on how to create that link onto the desktop. So that was pretty helpful. So I usually test out Forza with these, so I'm going to go ahead and launch Forza 5 with this controller. This is the first time I've been in a queue. Alright, so here we are in Forza 5. It finally launched, and it said that this was a screenshot button, so I'm going to go ahead and push this and see what happens. Oh, there we go. So it did take a screenshot, so that's pretty cool having a hardware button to do something like that. So let's go ahead and start driving. And right away, I can tell you that the uh, thumbsticks, still not a fan. Still not a fan of these tiny little thumbsticks. 
But to be fair, I don't even play on the Switch with the thumbsticks. I usually use a Pro Controller. So, I guess it's just a matter of preference. Now, the streaming quality isn't bad. There is quite a bit of latency. I don't know if I'd be very competitive with this, uh, with this controller, with this streaming and the lagging. But, I guess that's to be expected. That's not totally the fault of the controller that's more so the fault of the service itself and I do have really strong Wi-Fi fast internet so it should be as good as it can be I guess and I've felt worse before but this is definitely not the best uh, streaming so let's go ahead and get out of this and try out a racing game that's loaded right onto the phone so here we have an Apple Arcade game. So this is Apple Arcade service right on the phone. And this is Gear Club. It's a racing game. I just started playing it today because it said it was uh, controller friendly. And yes, this is, this is a much better experience. This feels like you're actually controlling a car on a console. So for a, uh, I don't want to call it a free game, but a game that is included with the Apple service, this is uh, pretty decent graphics and pretty good controllability. The physics are pretty good. And overall, not a, not a bad little game. Controller-wise, I can tell that this is uh, an analog trigger. So the, the right, the R2 here that I'm pulling back on is actually an analog trigger and not just a uh, digital gas pedal or anything. So that's good to know. But yeah, this is this is pretty great. Alright, just another quick little test here. This is a game called Heroish. Again, right on the Apple Arcade. And this is kind of a uh, tower defense slash simple MOBA game. I'm not in the MOBA style right now, but this is uh, just going in the Overland here. And really everything controls fine and everything is mapped properly. And that's really the important thing is I don't want to have to relearn different buttons for different games. Apple Arcade makes it very simple that if you're using an Xbox capable or Xbox compatible style controller that everything in the game is going to be recognized as the right inputs. So again, not much to show on this game control wise. Uh, the controls are very simple but just a, a commentary on nice having the all the different labels set. Now, what I will do is I'm going to try out this button right here, which is the, the Razer, whatever the app was called, uh, button. Nexus, that's it. So the, the Razer Nexus button. And I hit it, and you can see exactly what it did, which is pretty impressive. It's actually controlling outside of the game and inside of this app, and it just added Heroish to my list of games from the launcher. So let me just get out of this and go back in and see what happens if I just go up here and launch Heroish. And it just goes right to it. So let me try that again by... Let's go ahead and force quit this game. And then go back into the Nexus and launch it. And yeah, it just launches the app. It's that simple. So again, maybe uh, maybe if you have a bunch of games and you start adding them into that launcher, it makes sense. But it's not usually super hard to find a game on your in your main menu. But that's a nice little touch. So after testing a couple of games and and having it in the hand for a while, I'm ready to uh, to give my final thoughts here. A couple of things I didn't mention. One is we do have a lightning input here, and that is just for pass through charging. Which is nice, it's important if you're going to have long game sessions to be able to plug it into a battery bank or something. But it doesn't let you use any kind of audio accessories. Now, audio accessories being said, it's missing a headphone jack. It would be nice if it had a headphone jack. The backbone actually has a, an eighth inch jack right here to plug some simple earbuds in or something. I guess you can use your ear pods um, and use Bluetooth audio, which is going to be fine, but it would be nice if it had... A hardware input for for headphones but other than that the uh, ergonomics of it are every bit as nice as I'd expect 
Uh, it felt just fine in the hands. It felt actually good in the hands. It was comfortable. I could definitely hold on to this thing for a while for a long game. Um, the buttons are great. Uh, even the, the shoulder buttons are, are good. And uh, like I said a couple times, thumbsticks, not my favorite, but they got the job done. Now, whether you use the Android or the iOS version of this, that obviously depends on what kind of phones you have hanging around. I do have some uh, cheap but powerful Android phones, some you know generic Android phones that I do use when I have a USB-C controller. Um, but in this case, I chose to go with the iOS version because we just recently upgraded our phones and this iPhone 12 Max or 12 Pro Max is actually a really nice phone to... Uh, I didn't want to trade it in and, and get hardly nothing for it, so I kept it just for this very purpose. With Apple Arcade continuing to put out more and more games and more and more controller-friendly games, it just made sense to keep this type of uh, phone around the house and test out some of these things. And it actually looks pretty good, the size. I mean, it, it's, it looks like it was made exactly for this size phone. It doesn't look too small, doesn't look too big, and it feels great. Now comparing it to the version 1, I think I like everything about this version 2 better except for these joysticks. Now granted these things, if we did have these joysticks on this, it would look a little funny because this is a smaller shell and it, it would stick way up out of here and it would look, it would look funny. But again, I, I just prefer the size, but that being said... I still can, I still prefer everything about this version 2 better. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Again, I apologize for the crazy voice, but uh, hopefully I'll be feeling better soon. If this video was helpful for you, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. If you want to see more controller reviews and more gear reviews and more all kinds of geeky stuff, then go ahead and check out the rest of the channel and subscribe if you find something you like. I'm going to leave links to these down in the description below. Like I said, Amazon's got them for about $59 right now, which is, I think, a, a real decent deal for something like this, considering they came out at $99. Uh, when they get into that $50 range or even drop below that, then it's going to be pretty much a no-brainer for this type of product. But even at $59, I think it's comparable to the Backbone, which still uh, falls in the $79 to $99 range, depending on the sales. Um, so it's very compatible, very similar to it, and the Razer name definitely, I think, has a leg up right now. Uh, they've been around for a long time. So that's going to wrap it up. Thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.